okay, here it is, part two. <laughs> so last week I uh, promised that this week I would share the follow-up to the context um, of a client story from last week. And um, before I share the answer, <laughs> before I share what this team decided to do, I'm going to caveat it by saying that there is no right answer in any of this. There is no right answer in transformation. There is simply a choice that's made, an answer that we choose, and then we go out and we take action and we learn from that. And it is by this process of constantly sensing, responding, trying things, looking for correlations. It's through that action that we get to make progress, right? So I wanted to caveat it by saying there is no right answer to this to this conversation. So what we were talking about last week was a situation whereby uh, I've got one particular client. He and his team are working at a, a big project for this particular organization. It's a big change that's coming. And uh, there's this disparity in the team in terms of a number of people that are operating now in this sort of new method of working. I, I would even go so far as to say they have evolved their mindset to a new level. Uh, we talked a little bit about evolving consciousness last week. Uh, and so you've got part of the team that's working at this level. You've got another big chunk of the team that are working very much in sort of survival doing type mode of just trying to get through the day to day. Um, they're coming into a busy period. And then you've got people that are sort of trying to bridge the gap and, um, and try and make it work between some of those people that are stuck doing the day-to-day -day and some of those people that are seen as kind of the weirdos that are, they're a bit odd, they're doing something over here, we don't really pay too much attention to. So you've got this sort of dynamic of people that are working at different levels. You've got a question around how you meet people where they're at and, uh, and a bigger picture question, I think, around how much coercion do you use in implementing a collaborative system, one of my favorite questions. So the situation that they had was that they had decided to implement a model for distributed decision making. They were wanting to build that collaborative decision making model in their organization. And they'd set up the first of these decision making forums whereby the team, the core change team would present where stuff was at and then get that buy-in and that questioning and that feedback from uh, a wider team of people who are going to be affected by the change and actually get them to buy in and not only to help with the decision making but over a period of time actually draw them into the change making work as well right so they'd set this forum up it's all going to go to plan we were going to get some great decisions from everybody and what happened was that nobody turned up so nobody turns up to this forum and the question that this team had was well what do we do now do we go back and just get a leader to tell them that they have to turn up? Do we go and uh, set up individual meetings with each of them? Do we try, uh, do, we, do we move ahead having made a decision ourselves and say, you know, reinforce that idea that if you don't turn up, we're not actually seeking permission, we're just going to keep moving. And so there were all of these questions going on around like, how do we respond to this situation? And uh, I spoke to this client again today, and I said to him, give me the download, what's happened in the last week? And uh, I will do my best to relay what it was that he said to me. So the first thing he said is it's been a really interesting learning experience. So what they actually did was they ended up going, because they needed some decisions from various department groups, what they did was they actually went out and got the people that they've been working with in each of those departments, um, in the room with them and the CEO to say, hey, this is what the decision is, this is where we're going, let's do it. Um, and the way that that meeting played out was that actually the team that they've been working with, the team that were in the department, got into the room, put the idea forth, got the permission, got the tick off. The core change team kind of sat back and didn't actually have to say anything. It came straight from the department head. So that's that's really cool, right, is that, that buy-in around these departments, um, both the team and the department head being in the room and, and saying, this is where we want to go. This is the decision we're making. Off we go. So they chose to tackle it with individual uh, meetings with the CEO to, to go and get that permission, get that decision made. So that in itself is an interesting kind of construct. And as we talked a little bit further, this client relayed to me the part of what he thought was going on was that um, the, there was this question of trust. So here we have a core change team who are preaching these ideals around, we will enable you to make decisions. And the trust factor was coming in around those teams saying, 
we don't really trust that we're going to be allowed to make this decision without somebody more senior coming and telling us this is actually how it's going to be. And so part of the reasoning behind going and setting up that individual workshop with each of those groups and the CEO was that they were there was this trust around is that senior person is that person who um, who we think we need to to give us permission to make this decision is that senior person living breathing uh, doing the things that the core change team are preaching have they been exposed to the same information are they are they using the visual management tools that have been built or are they being catered to over here in this other special way and actually there's a whole bunch of secret meetings going on or or you know this leader isn't going to act in the way that the core change team are telling us we're prepping our leaders to act and so by setting up the individual sessions um, what this client believes was part of what was going on was actually just a bit of a trust test around actually let's have the conversation Let's have it in a slightly safer or, I guess, a more familiar environment around going to a senior person for a decision. But actually through that, what the team focused on was making sure that there was congruency and integrity around the way that the decisions were being made. And in this particular case, this leader had been uh, had, had been inducted into this way of working, briefed well, all of those sorts of things. And so um, really the way that that meeting played out in each instance was the team put forward what it was that they, they were looking for. Core change team sat quietly to one side and support as needed. And that leader said, yep, I understand the information that you've presented in front of me. I understand why you're making this decision. I understand the recommendation. What are you waiting for? And so the, the, my clients seeing that part and part of that, it was that visibility and that trust around actually this leader is going to act in the way that we're expecting. And uh, so then, then he sort of went a layer deeper and he said, you know, the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually, we, we feel that we need that visibility of that senior person being in that open decision forum. So whereas we might have uh, previously backed off that for fear of re-encouraging that deferral to hierarchy for decision making, he said what we realize that we now need to do is actually make sure that that person is in the room so that there is trust from the wider team that that person has the visibility, is seeing the same information, is acting in the in the same way, is working in the new method with us, and so that they are standing shoulder to shoulder with that wider team. Um, so there's some interesting inflections there around bringing a senior leader to an open decision forum um, in a way that means that the team aren't going to defer to that person for a hierarchical decision, um, but actually the reason that we're bringing that senior person into that forum is so that everybody understands that they have the same visibility. But the interesting dynamic for me is that that what that wider change team needed to go through this other experience of that individual meeting to be able to show up to the collaborative decision forum with an understanding that this leader is not there to be the default person who makes all the decisions, but simply that that person is there to observe and witness. Now, if we'd gone straight to having had that person in the forum to be there and to witness, potentially you would have had that deferring behavior going on, and that was why the team had backed off it initially. So, uh, so that was how they handled it. All in all, a really interesting learning situation. And, uh, and as I said, so they've, they've gone through a little bit of a hack around, let's do something that the wider team is familiar with. Let's do a meeting with a leader to get a decision to sort of hack us through and keep the momentum, but also there's this wider, more strategic plan around what does that look like in future so that we don't end up back at having to go back to those one-on-one -on -one decision making forums. And so what does that bigger picture look like around um, having done that little intervention to keep the initial momentum? How do we make sure that going forward, people turn up to the decision forums, those decisions are made and things move on? And so there was some really particular language chosen um, and used by that leader in those individual meetings in terms of showing up to the, to the open decision forum um, and then obviously being there and asking how things are going, what help do you need, I'm going to be there so that if you need me I can help, but equally I'm going to be there so that I've got visibility of the decisions you're making. So a little bit of a hack, a little bit of strategy. And uh, yeah, that was how that team chose to move forward. Um, if I dial it back a little and put that other lens on around uh, people acting at different levels, um, what I can observe is that the core change team, who are 
operating in this new way of working um, and, and sort of trying to work out how to do that collaborative stuff on a higher level, they were able to actually let go of we're not going to stick to the method around everybody must be at the open forum to make a decision otherwise we move forward. They actually let go of that and they said, you know what, in this instance, we're going to go back to what people are familiar with. We're going to let that play out, but we're going to do it in a way that builds to the bigger strategy. Um, so that was really cool. Those people that are still very much uh, sort of stuck in a little bit of that survival mode and that day-to-day -day type stuff were able to uh, show up and be given some visibility with a senior person around, hey, we're intending to take this decision. If you're familiar with Dave Marquette's work, that whole idea of this is our intention. So we're not asking permission, but this is our intention, is that we are going to make this decision and move forward. So a little bit of a stretch for them, but also in a way where we weren't challenging them on every single thing every single uh, boundary. We weren't challenging them to show up fully in an open decision forum and just operate this way. We, we did it in an individual workshop meeting with a leader, which is a familiar context for us making decisions, but the way that we asked them to show up at that meeting was a little bit different. We asked them to show up with intent rather than show up and ask permission. So that was how that team kind of bridged that gap. Um, I hope that was insightful or useful or uh, interesting at the very least for you. I did get a few comments where people were saying you must show up next week. So that's how it landed. That's how it played out. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, I would love to hear them. Um, be super interested if anybody else has had a similar experience and, and that dynamic and, ha and how you're working through that with your teams as well. So that's it from me today. Uh, if there's anything else, as always, just drop me a question, email, commentary, whatever it is. I would love to chat. And I hope wherever you are in the world today, you are having an awesome, awesome day. It is kind of the last day of summer here in Glenorchy. We're, um, we're definitely heading into autumn. So I'm going to do my best to go out and get some sunshine. And I hope that you might get the chance to do the same. I will see you all next week. Thanks for your time.